Good evening. I thank you for this opportunity to address you tonight about the bubble zone. I'm representing the majority of these people here who are here because we totally and completely oppose this uh, infringement on the free speech rights of the citizens of Rockford. To make a long story short, Rockford's abortion facility has been in operation for a lot of years. Uh, years ago, the numbers at this abortion facility were around 50 to 75 abortions per week. In the last two years, because of the hard work of many people in this community, the numbers have gone down to 20 to 25 abortions per week. We believe this bubble zone is an attempt to counteract that, to because they're losing business. Now, this, support, this bubble zone is simply not needed because we've checked with the Rockford Police Department and the City Attorney's Office looking for complaints against the sidewalk counselors who are there offering information to mothers going in. I have a document here from the City Attorney's Office that shows there is not one single complaint against a sidewalk counselor. Now, there are 164 other complaints down there. Many of them are by pro-lifers against the clinic itself for the signs in those windows. I don't think I need to go through that sordid history of what they've displayed against the people of Rockford. Uh, some of it is just too disgusting for me to even speak about in your company. We've complained when our lives have been threatened by some of these signs in the windows, when they posted personal medical history in these windows, when they've said people with HIV are going to rot and die. And we've made complaints about this, and the city's looked at them and said, that's free speech. Okay, all we want is the same right to free speech, is to offer women in a difficult situation another choice. And I think it's very telling that no sidewalk counselors had a complaint against them in all this time by an actual woman going into the clinic. Because these sidewalk counselors, if uh, Mary Jane would stand up, she's a grandmother, she's one of our sidewalk counselors. Last week, Mary Jane spoke to two mothers entering this clinic, and these two mothers chose life. If this abort, or if this bubble zone was in place, there's a very good chance that both of these babies in their mother's womb would be dead right now. This is not only a free speech issue, but it is a life and de death issue also. Now, there is a problem with noise down there. When sidewalk counselors like Mary Jane try and speak to the women going in, the abortion facility gets on an amplified sound system very loudly, tries to cut her off, make noise. In the past, they've used this amplified sound system to broadcast some very vulgar profanity to drive off the young families that come and pray. Well, if that's free speech and he's allowed to do that, then shouldn't we simply be allowed to offer a brochure and a word of encouragement and help to a mother entering this clinic? There was one incident, I'll wrap up very quickly, one incident in the last couple of years where a homeless man was allegedly hit by not a client, but an abortion clinic worker going in. The city attorney's office looked at the videotape, said nothing happened. There's no issue here, really, with the sidewalk counselors. They are young and older women and men who simply offer help to people going in. And to take away their right to free speech, simply because the numbers of abortions is going down in a facility, that placed a sign in its window that said Northern Illinois Women's Center 50,000, Jesus Christ 50. That was their sign of celebration when they hit the 50,000 abortion mark. It would be a travesty of justice and it would, it would be something that would really show the character of the people of this city, that we are choosing that evil of a, a way to look at human life over the free speech rights of people to offer help to mothers in need. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Abby Feige. Feige. Hi. I'm here to address those of you who are pro-choice. I hope that you will consider that many of the women entering the abortion facility don't feel that they have a choice. They feel pressured to have an abortion, or they don't feel that they have the resources to support a baby. Many times we watch women go weeping into the abortion facility because they are already filled with regret and remorse about the decision they're about to make. The pro-lifers are their, their very last hope, their very last true choice before making a heartbreaking and permanent decision to end the life of their baby. We offer them resources they need, free medical care, information about the pregnancy care center and the maternity house. We have thrown many baby showers for mothers in need. We supply them with diapers and emotional support. I am pleased to tell you that the pro-lifers save, on average, five babies a month. Five babies a month. And of course the abortion mill owner is going to call the police on us. Every time a 
mother chooses life for her child, he loses between $600 and $1,000. I would like to introduce you to Stephanie and Adriana. Two Augusts ago, Stephanie was 16 and arrived at the abortion facility to end the life of her baby. Not because she wanted to, but because her father told her she had to. It was her only option. Stephanie had no choice. She was heartbroken and frightened, but the pro-lifers were able to approach her on the sidewalk and offer her alternatives. As you can see, she bravely chose life. Her beautiful, happy baby girl, Adriana, is here because the pro-lifers were allowed to exercise their free speech rights and approach Stephanie on a public sidewalk. As you can see, Adriana has not missed a meal. She is loved and cared for by many, and the grandfather who insisted she be aborted now thinks she's the most beautiful little girl in the entire world. Stephanie has also changed her life, gets better grades, is hanging out with a better crowd, works every hour she can, she is struggling to have a better future for herself and for her baby. Arguably, two lives were saved on that day. I can assure you, if you pass this infringement on our free speech rights, not one life will be saved. Not one dollar will be saved. But I can assure you that many, many lives will be lost. Are you personally willing to go to bed each Wednesday and Friday night Knowing that that mother, that morning, a mother in her most desperate moments, couldn't get the help that she needed, or that a baby died that could have been spared, I ask you please to consider this carefully. Thank you very much. Thank you.